Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to excuse me, a Malaysian airline. Excuse me. I don't know what it is today. That's okay. To a Malaysian airline edition of This Is Our Life. These are audio, audio not audio tapes. That's just something about my age. CDs over here that I'm messing with. Trying to keep the cats knocking the thing over. Yeah. Um, when they're nightly races. Yeah. And sometimes in the middle of the day, too, just all of a sudden. Hey. Cat races. <laughs> I think if we had more space, it would be better for the kittens, especially John. He's dense. He's he's going to get bigger. He's, well, like I said, he's very much like my boy Brew. He's a small pussy cat right now, but he's going to get bigger. Yeah, Brew never got very big, but John will. I think he's going to grow a lot. Yeah. Um, my comments as to the... I dropped a stitch in my knee. Sorry. On, as to the Malaysian Airlines plane... I mean, I, I have no information that I can use to speculate as to what has happened. I will say this, that it's impossible in this day and age for it to have, yeah, to have vanished without anyone knowing what happened. Somebody knows. Yeah. You have to consider what people had on board. Okay, you have the, the you know the flight data recorder, the and all that kind of stuff that the plane has. Okay, you're dealing with that right there. People are picking up signals. I, the flight. I don't remember if the flight data recorder or there's another instrument. Black box. You can't just turn it off. It doesn't just simply turn off. It'll keep transmitting. You can't turn it off. Okay, that's what I've learned from previous planes going down. But these we'll just like keep recording. Yeah. And there there's also another thing in there that will will like show its location. Two hours of the, I think the black box has the last two hours of the conversations and things going on in the plane. Oh, and let let me also state that I have I guess I don't know what he would be, a cousin or whatever. On my auntie's side, who is a retired FBI agent, and his specialty was planes. Yeah, investigating plane crashes. That's why he refuses to fly even to this day. <laughs> so I'd rather walk. <laughs> yeah, it's like was it John Madden, the football guy? He uh, he won't fly. He'll take. He has his own bus. Yeah, yeah. He won't fly though. Uh, maybe. maybe Chicken too. You know. Yeah, uh, but it's too hard. He had to, gets to the head. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. Aside from you know the flight data recorder and all that kind of stuff on board, people had cell phones, people had laptops, people had Kindles. You cannot tell me that absolutely no one had any of these things. Okay. Unless they took them away from home or something. Yeah. So you know these, this you can find me with this. This little instrument right here, you can find out where I am right now. Okay, so I'm sorry, but there's no way the thing just disappeared. Somebody knows something, and I think now you know they keep talking about well, maybe it went down over here, maybe it went down over there. Three weeks, three weeks. People's cell phones were being tracked. You know, the. Yeah, the battery's going to die, and then you're Yeah, eventually, yeah. But with the NSA tracking everybody in this country, uh, which is this country, not over there, but they probably tracked them too. But they haven't said it yet. <laughs> yeah. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if the NSA knows exactly what happened. Maybe the NSA is involved with it, for all I know. But I'm sorry, you know, I mean, Lucky get off the bed. I, I do want to say that I wish they would leave the families alone unless the families want to be on. Because I know if I were a family member, I would want this to be publicized. I wouldn't want it to be swept under the rug. I think that one guy by his mother kind of volunteered. Yeah. But, yeah, if you volunteer or something, but don't harass. 
Well, don't corner them. Yeah, don't corner them. Don't harass them. Just if they want to speak, let them speak. But you know, there there's a point where it becomes harassment. So, and let me also say something about the ocean, about stuff floating in the ocean. Hey, John. There's stuff all over the ocean. There, there are mile-long, mile-wide piles of garbage floating in the ocean. It, it's, you're going to find stuff floating in the ocean. You're going to find old ships that just, you know, for whatever reason, they're just floating out there. Uh, ships that broke their moor from their moorings, they're going to be floating out there. What about the ones that like happened during the typhoons and the hurricanes? And oh, excellent, excellent went point. Out to sea and God knows where they where, where they, they are now. Where yeah. they went to. And um, and then you have to think about you know when there's a flood, uh, even inland rivers will take you know rivers go to the ocean. They don't go the other way. They go to the ocean. Eventually. Eventually, yeah. So they would be taking debris from inland out into the ocean. Now, I, I will say this, that, you know, I've seen, how do I say, not simply driftwood, but in Canada, uh, where they used to have, yeah, where they would float them down the rivers yeah. and the coast. Now, eventually those trees will just become waterlogged and sink. Yeah. But there's a point where they will float, so you you're, you're even going to have that out there. Um, I mean, you're going to have all sorts. Of, you know, a lot of ships. They're not going to save their garbage until they get back to to shore. They just throw it overboard. Well, I mean, they may get to shore a year later. Who wants a yeah? Who wants year's worth of smelly garbage? You know. Yeah. Floating around on the deck. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think it's amazing, to be honest with you, that all those mines, those anti ship mines from World War One and World War Two. Well, they probably rusted to pieces. Yeah. And then the, the Japanese. Slowly disintegrated, you know. Yeah. The Japanese, uh, I don't know what to the, what the call them. They were balloon bombs that the Japanese sent over. Most of those just. Vanished. Nobody knows where they went, but they're probably in the forest somewhere. You know, like they're still finding landmines. And oh yeah. yeah. World War One, World War Two, and yeah, yeah I was. Somebody just, steps on one. And yeah. Boom. You know, when I was a little kid, we found. Well, there my goat. Yeah, we <laughs> we found stuff all over Okinawa. Uh, I had a friend who, when he was in high school, he was in Germany, and he he said, "You just walk out in the woods and find stuff." So he, imagine the ocean. And the ocean, it doesn't just sit in one place. It just it moves, you know. It drifts around. It eventually sinks sooner or later. Yeah. So you know you you. So you know that salt water is gonna corrode it and dissolve it. Yeah. So you know you have just because they see debris from a satellite or an airplane. So what? There's debris all over the ocean. No. It has to be the right kind of debris. If it's like. The, the side of a fuselage of an aircraft, the door of an aircraft, the seat cushion or a seat. don't know if this whole seat would float, but the seat cushion is supposed to float. You know, I think they found like a wooden pallet floating around out there a while back, about a week ago. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, like a wooden pallet's going to be. That well, cargo, uh, air, well, airplane, yeah. Passengers, you know. So, you know, I mean, you know somebody knows. You know a lot of people actually know. They're just not saying anything. Like I said, people had their laptops. People had their cell phones. We were people... talking about them in that they had a cargo full of lithium batteries and they blew up. Ooh. So they're kind of unstable sometimes. Well, that would make sense. You know, um, and you know, it wouldn't surprise me if somebody did pay for it to be stolen. But yeah, you know, or if North Korea or um, that one country in Africa where they hijack ships all the time, Nigeria, you know, Nigerians, you know, they can, you know, who knows? I mean, we don't know. You can speculate all you want. 
and that's what they're doing. And I'm glad they're keeping it, you know, in the public eye. But it's been three freaking weeks, people. You know, I mean, people want to know what happened to their relative. Yeah, you know, so I would say the moral thing to do for those in the NSA or FBI or whoever, wherever that no. know, is to say something. Yeah, right. Even if you have to go and be a, a deep throat and do it that way, say something. Deep throat. They're not gonna say anything because they don't want to get their head blown off. Yeah, just like the the cop, uh, the state trooper down in Connecticut. You better be careful. They're gonna suicide him if, if he doesn't watch out how he says things and what he says. Oh, so that that person, that guy who pretended to be a woman called. And he said, are you anti-American to her for or him for saying, um, you know, well, didn't you uh, agree to defend the Constitution? You know, so, you know, he's got, he better be careful. They'll suicide him pretty soon. But anyway, so, you know, we don't know. I don't know anyway. Somebody knows. My wife and I don't know. We may have opinions, but opinions are opinions. Uh, you know, like a piece of wire or something. Oh, it's a. Make sure there's no hook or anything in that gun. Yeah, it's a piece of fishing line. Here, you can have it back. Well, Not my fingers, though. Just don't swallow it. Well, 